All right, welcome to day three. If you're enjoying the short video format and if you're learning some new things this week, let us know. Comment on the videos or find us on social. We'd love to hear from you. Day two showed how you can use tools to win projects. Today's lessons are practical. How you can be more productive with your project once you've won the work. Marty's gonna show you 3D conceptual tools in the cloud. He'll give a tutorial on one of the tools called Schema and we're gonna even give you free access to try it out yourself. Okay, so we're gonna show you some cloud conceptual tools that have come out recently. Uh, first, we'll review a couple key principles just as a refresher from yesterday. Uh, we will give you then a brief rundown on three different tools as you can see listed, so let's get to it. All right, uh, as we discussed yesterday, part of what BIM 2.0 is moving towards is systemization. And part of this relies on the ability to do analysis and iterate decisions in an agile way. You can accelerate the iteration process and get into a more agile mode uh, where you can uh, revisit things and change things around in a much more fluid manner. So we're going to be showing you those three conceptual tools in that context. They're all based on uh, cloud tools that have uh, collaboration built into them. We're going to be referencing this diagram from yesterday where analysis looked at doing site assessment, schematic floor plans, and look and feel conversations as part of preliminary uh, schematic design. Uh, yesterday we took a look at the look and feel conversations with Midjourney and some other tools. Uh, we are going to do a little bit more of that in the next video today when we look at Varus. In this video we will be looking at the three tools primarily for site assessment and um, some of them getting into schematic floor plans. So, um, when we get into systematizing, part of this is the ability to iterate by using engineering simulation earlier in the process. So, in the fall challenge, fall of 22, we gave you a couple steps towards digital twin uses. The step one being data quality readiness, and we gave you this tool that allowed you to evaluate your Revit data for the ability to use it in various uh, sustainability calculations that you can see in this picture. Uh, step two is engineering simulation, and we weren't doing any engineering simulation in the previous challenge, but we are today. And this is fundamental to these tools that we're going to show you in the cloud for conceptual design because you really need the engineering simulation in order to make some early decisions and produce a bunch of options so you can compare them. And that's part of why these new solutions can speed up the process. We're not gonna cover step three and four um, in this challenge, but we will be getting heavily into step two. So just as um, you know, an illustration of this, uh, we're showing you the kind of analysis, uh, visual sky component, sunlight, daylight, noise, solar, um, view shed, uh, all of these things from the SpaceMaker platform that Autodesk acquired. But many of these tools uh, have similar analysis capabilities, and so we're going to show you them in, in some of these other tools as well. Uh, but there was a pretty concise, uh, quick flip-through video of all the different analyses that SpaceMaker could do, so I thought that would be a good example of what we mean when we say engineering simulation at a conceptual uh, level. <clears throat> so that, that kind of gives you a picture of it. So if we go back to our diagram of these tools, uh, yesterday we covered the tools that um, incorporate AI. And today we're gonna to be covering the procedural generative concept tools uh, on the, uh, shown on the right. Um, however, we won't be covering Podium since that's been discontinued. So we will start um, from the bottom up, starting with Spaces, and then we'll go to Snaptrude and then Schema. So Spaces is a really cool application that runs only on the iPad and uses the Apple Pencil to do conceptual design. I'm going to jump into it a little bit so you can get an idea of what it does. So you can make a shape uh, in Spaces by drawing with the Apple Pencil, and then you can use the pencil to edit that shape uh, by a scribbling to make it an eraser and you can see that what it does is it acts like a cutting void uh, to alter the box and turn it into this other plan extrusion and so there's various um, controls here that allow you to 
for instance, add stories, remove stories. Uh, but everything uses the pencil. You can change floor heights using the pencil. Um, it's pretty fluid for, for what it does. But again, it's, a, it's an interface all based on the iPad with the Apple Pencil. It doesn't really get into the type of advanced block stack program solver things that you see in, in either yesterday's AI-driven tools or the other procedural tools you're going to see today. If you were going to be doing a fairly straightforward building like an office building, um, then this seems like an interesting approach to doing it. You can, uh, for instance, assign uses uh, to various parts of the building. Um, you can then alter those parts. So we're going to sh show how, uh, for instance, the top of this, you can turn it into a mechanical penthouse. Um, pretty interesting application. Let me just jump forward a little further so that we're not, um, you know, watching everything that happens here. But this is the turning turning this into a mechanical penthouse. So um, you can see the top on the left hand side is now smaller than the other part of the envelope, and you know same thing with the base. So you get this shape. Next part is putting this on a site. Um, so I'm just going to skip forward. They brought in similar to other tools uh, the ability to create a site, and now we're going to do a little bit of manipulation on the site so that we're going to actually give ourselves a plot boundary drawn with the pencil take that whole building rotated on the site and the whole idea here is just to get some understanding of the building in context much like the other tools but now you know in a facile way using a pencil um, so that's pretty much what this is about. Uh, functionally, it will do much the same as the other tools, but it won't get into, you know, the the advanced kind of packing algorithms that you get into with um, um, certainly schema and potentially with Snaptrude. Um, the other thing that you can do, which I think is pretty interesting here, is that you can get into some placeholder uh, facade generation, and then as you change things. Um, it will you know, give you a good visual reference for what this might look like. So that's kind of fun. Um, it's not necessarily the facade you would build, but it gives you an idea of rhythm and you know, size of, of um, facade elements and, and those sorts of things. Uh, you can do sun studies. You can do um, shadow studies. Um, And then what you can do is um, use the pencil like a knife to carve up space and drop other uses in so that you can then um, come up with a very conceptual floor plan and share it out to somebody in various formats. So that's spaces. Next we'll get to Snaptrude. Snaptrude uh, is a pretty interesting application. The idea is that you can lay out a floor plan and what it will do is given the height of the floor, it'll make a, a bunch of blocks. So, and then you can, it makes it easy to copy those blocks to other floors, like the whole set of the floor plan to other floors. So if you have a very repetitive building, you can really uh, create that pretty quickly in Snaptrude. So as I said, once you have the layout on one floor, it's pretty easy to then take that layout, copy it up to many floors, and get yourself a starting point for a building. Um, that looks kind of like this. Um, you can then pretty easily edit this um, stack of cubes by using um, either changing floor heights or by grabbing edges and pushing and pulling. All right, so now if we select some of these things, we can start doing some interesting editing by pushing and pulling these faces. And you'll see that um, 
you know, we can mess around with the form of this building. Next, you can take this building and put it on a site so you can visualize it better. So we will um, drop this into a site uh, similar to what you might find. Uh, however, in this case, we're making the building before we open up the site. And then we've got to position the building on the site. So now you can see the building on the site. And then like uh, I was illustrating, you can do some engineering analysis, in this case, sun and shadow study analysis. And then one of the things that Snaptrude has is this ability to take this mass and turn it into a building. Um, so it has some presets for, for instance, solid walls, glass curtain walls, and you can apply these to the faces of the mass and it will get you something that looks like a building, uh, which you'll see coming up. And then you can even pass this to Revit. Uh, and so this is what you get when you apply those presets to this. And as far as I can tell, Snaptroot aims to be like a web version of Revit. Um, it's pretty interesting in that you can take this model, pass it to Revit, you can even bring Revit models into Snaptrude. And the claim is that you can work back and forth between Revit and Snaptrude, but I have not been able to verify or validate or even look at the fidelity of the data uh, between Revit and Snaptrude. Um, so I can't really comment on it, but that is the, the goal from what's been explained to me. And that's the idea is that it's the ability to go from a form to um, an early conceptual building uh, and then take that data into Revit uh, to do more with it. Uh, although I think the ambition that they have is ultimately for you to be able to just do this work in their application. The idea then is by adding more things like muttons and furniture, you can develop the model to the point where you can have a client conversation around the ideas for the design and potentially then take this in to Revit to do construction drawings. So a pretty interesting application. Um, just some other examples. You can give this a free trial by going to their website at snaptrude.com and signing up there. Okay, the next one is Schema, and Schema is a little different than every other concept tool that I've seen because it's created to be able to take the data created in the conceptual stage and move it forward through design development into construction drawings in a way that works for an architect's office. Um, and that relates to the diagram shown on the left. So the idea is that Schema has a catalog that sets up the rules for how the packing algorithms work with the massing so that the designs that you have in your file server from Revit over the last uh, 15 years can be harvested to make this catalog. And then the conceptual tool Schema will use those designs to create the cubes that are shown in the blocking and stacking uh, in the diagrams on the right. And by doing it this way, what it means is you as an architect in your office, when you take those cubes and use the design development features of schema, you will be able to produce then a higher LOD building that has your Revit families, your wall types, your furniture, fixtures, equipment, all of that stuff in it that your office has as standards. So that um, two architects implementing schema, even if they make the same massing model, would produce different buildings from that because of the catalog that's unique to your instance of schema. This application is located at uh, schema.site. However, uh, we've partnered with schema to bring you an extended trial through the challenge. So if you sign up through the challenge link, you will be able to get a 60-day trial to schema instead of the normal seven-day trial that you would get on the schema.site website. 
So uh, I would urge you to go through the challenge sign up process for schema because you'll be able to much do a much more thorough evaluation of the product um, than by going through the, the normal sign up on their website. Because this has been a stealth project, there really is very little uh, video material available out there for schema. So in the next video, I'm going to do a pretty in-depth demo of it so that you can understand how to use it. So uh, stay tuned and uh, watch the next video coming up today uh, for an understanding of how to use schema.